Hello and welcome to more Nerdy Rodent Geekery. Today I'm taking a quick look at making those daft animations. You know, the ones where people eat pasta and that kind of thing. This time, however, it's using a brand new release on GitHub called Animate Diff. This one allows you to use a safe tensors stable diffusion model of your choice in combination with a couple of motion modules in order to create those weird videos. It's based on tune video, but this time you don't need to actually do the tuning, so how awesome is that? Their gallery of examples from different models shows the sort of thing you can expect to get out of this. And obviously those other animations I'm showing on the screen were also made using this program. If you want all the lovely nerdy stuff, they have links there to their paper and also to the project page, as well as all these instructions for use. As you can see, it's early days yet with the code having only just come out, but already down here, we can see that the VRAM requirements have been brought down from the usual 60 gig to something more like 12 gig of VRAM, which means that anyone can run it on something like a 3090 or a 4090. There isn't a Gradio interface yet, nor is there an automatic 1111 extension. Those things should come fairly soon, but for now, you will need to know your way around a text editor in order to set up your prompts. So with that installed, all you need to do is crack open your Anaconda prompt and you're ready to begin installing the program. If you're on Linux, the chances are you already have Git installed, but if you haven't got it installed on Microsoft Windows, the easiest way to do that is simply to run conda install git. I followed the instructions exactly like they have on the website there, with the first command being the git clone. Obviously, I've already downloaded it, but when you run that command, it will download everything for you. Next up is to change directory into that new download area, and then to create your new Anaconda environment. Obviously, once again, I have already got mine created, but when you run the command, that will set up everything for you. And with your new environment done, all you need to do then is Conda activate, and you will be ready to go. Just to note that as an optional extra, I also installed Triton, mostly because it said I needed Triton, and I like to get rid of warnings and errors and things like that. With the program installation completed, model downloads were the next thing that I did. Now the git lfs install is fairly straightforward. Obviously, again, I've already got it installed, but it's fine there anyway. I can just run the install command. Again, it's updated. This is where I do deviate from the instructions ever so slightly, mostly because they've got this command here, git clone, and they're using this stable diffusion repository. If we take a quick look at that, you'll see it has lots and lots of files in here. That's four gig, that's four gig, and two at seven gig. And then if you take a look in here, there's even more as well. Now, you don't actually need all of these files. What you do need is the diffuser stuff. And thankfully, there are a whole bunch of branches there that don't have those extra files and do just have the diffuser stuff. So that's what I did. I downloaded this FP16 branch instead, which I did by changing directory into that stable diffusion models directory and then running that git clone command instead. As you can see there, I have specified the FP16 branch. Obviously, I've downloaded that already, but that will download everything for you as well. Next up is to download the motion modules. There's two of those. However, when I tried running that command, I did get an error saying the number of downloads has been exceeded. So instead, what you can do is go over to the Google Drive link. There you can see the two checkpoints. And if you go over to these little dots, click that, you can select download and you want to put those into your models motion model directory exactly like I'm showing there. So there I've got the one four and the one five. It's got the text as well. Put motion module checkpoints here dot text. And the final thing is to download the actual stable diffusion safe tensors models themselves. They've got a whole load of scripts there to download. Obviously, you can't run those on Microsoft Windows. They're bash scripts. Maybe there's something funky you can do, but they're basically just downloading the models from Civit AI. If you don't have anywhere else to put them, you can put them into the models dreambooth underscore Laura directory. 
As you see, I've got a few in there already, and it says put personalized text to image checkpoints here dot text. Now do bear in mind that each of those model files is like two gig upwards. So if you're downloading a bunch of them, that's a fair amount of downloads. If you do have stable diffusion and perhaps you've got some models downloaded already, then no worries. You can use those. As you can see, I've got a bunch of safe tensors models there and you can put those into your configuration files as well. OK, so that's the program install done. We've got the model downloads done. It, that means it's time to run. Like I mentioned at the start, this is a pretty new program, so expect things to change quite a lot in the coming weeks and days. One change that hasn't yet been applied as of the making of this video, however, is PR number 25. The main reason I'm using this myself is that it's ever so much faster, at least twice as fast. This is a totally optional step and will likely not be required in the future. Once this gets merged in, you'll just have it by default. But if it hasn't yet been merged in, if you do still need to do this, what you can do is run this git fetch origin command and that will grab it down as the name I've given it there is FP16. You can put whatever name you want in there, but FP16 seemed to make sense to me. And then once you've done that, you can run git checkout FP16 already on FP16, of course, here, and that will mean that you're now running this new faster code. If at any time you want to go back to the main branch there, you can just run git checkout main. I'm going to go back to FP16 because I like it faster. Another little optional hack I've done is change the default output from GIF to MP4. All I did there was search and replace .gif and change that to .mp4. It's those three places there. Once you've done that, you'll also need to pip install image io ffmpeg. Obviously, I've got it installed already, but that will then let you save the outputs as mp4 videos. I've saved my modified file as animate underscore nr.py. There it is. So it's different from the original file. This helps so I can run git pull in the future and it doesn't go, hey, you've changed a file. No, I've, I've put my own one in there so it won't impact in the future. Whether you made any of those optional changes or not, probably the first thing you want to do is run a test just to make sure that the examples they've given you work as expected. Now, the one I ran was the first one there. So the config for one to new, that's just copied and pasted there after I ran that download script. And that gave me some output in the samples directory and then two new with a nice date stamp on there. And we've got all the individual videos with one absolutely massive video file there as well. You should probably get some output pretty similar to that too. But basically there, their example has worked and everything seems to be doing what it should. Now we've got the 1.4 models here and then the 1.5 five motion modules at the bottom. As you can see, 1.4 seems to give you a lot more motion with 1.5 being quite subtle. As you can see, each of those individual files are 512 by 512. That's just the default size. After that example worked, of course, I wanted to dive straight in and start making my own stuff. So here is a breakdown of how to do that. Custom configuration is exactly as they show there. And what I did there in the configs prompt directory was basically just took one of their configuration files, copied it and gave it my own name. You can see there I've got tests one through to five. All you need to do then is open up that file in the text editor of your choice. I'm using G edit here. As you can see, there's a whole bunch of different things. What are all these things? Well, it does tell you on the example there. So let's break this down. First up at the top here, you've got config path and base. Basically, path is the LoRa if you've specified a base. If not, it's just the base model itself. Like I've got in my example there, I'm not using a LoRa. That's just the base model. So I can use base empty and that's what it will choose. Perhaps a slightly weird way of working, but that's what seems to happen. The next section there is for the motion modules. Those are the checkpoint files we downloaded earlier, the 1.4 and 1.5. So that will run on each of those. Seeds, steps and guidance scale should be fairly familiar if you've used stable diffusion. That's basically a whole set of random numbers. How many steps is going to take and the classifier free guidance scale. 
Next up, you've got all your text prompts there and the associated negative text prompts. This makes it pretty easy to set up each scene in your video sequence all in that one file, sort of like a story if you want to, or you could just make a load of random things like I've done there. Either way is fun. If you run the minus minus help option, you can see there are a whole bunch of different things you can use here. The main ones you'll be interested in are L, W and H. That's basically length in frames, width and height. Now, of course, the VRAM requirements do increase as the width and height increase at 704 by 576 with the default length. I was using 18 gig of VRAM at 768 by 640 and the default length I was using 19 and a half gigs of VRAM and 768 by 640 again, but with a length of 24 used 21.8 gigs of VRAM. So you really are going to need something like a 3090 if you want to have longer videos and much larger resolutions. If you just run with all the defaults, you get a length of 16 frames, which at 8 FPS is a two second video at 512 by 512. If you're using PR25 like I showed earlier, you'll have a bunch of extra options such as minus minus FP32, which basically goes back to the original mode running it in FP32 mode. And you'll also have these content length, stride and overlap options. More information on those options is in that PR. Normally, if you put a length over 24, the command will go, no, I'm sorry, I can't do that. Some tensor error. But with this version, you can keep the context length there up to 24, which is the usual maximum. And here I've got a length of 48 and that will actually run through and give me a six second video. And there on the screen now, I'm just showing one of those six second example videos. It's not bad. It's longer than two seconds, isn't it? And it, it, it seems to be doing its thing. OK, so let's do another thing. Here's a super simple example config. Here I've got nerdy rodent test number five there. I've got the path to my stable diffusion model. I'm using both of those motion modules. I've just got a single seed, the normal steps and guidance there, one prompt and one negative prompt to go with that. Using all the defaults, but my special config file there, so minus minus config, and I'm specifying that. Just hit return on that command. That'll come up with loads of text there. You can just ignore all of the things to start with. And eventually a little bar will start going up. As you can see there, it's got an estimate of around 28 seconds. And for me, it's using 15.2 gig of VRAM at the moment. After it's done those 25 steps, it'll then do the 16 frames and save the MP4 video before moving on to the next motion module. Again, that motion module will take around 26, 27 seconds to complete. It will then save that second video and also a summary video as well. If I pop over to the samples directory, there is my latest sample. That's the combined videos. So there we've got the 1.4 motion model and the 1.5. I think that's turned out quite well. Other things you may want to try include a fork, which also supports an initial image. So here we can see on issue 21, we've got a link over to another fork of this. So if you do a git clone of that one, for example, into another directory, then you'll get different options to use in your configuration file. There you can see in their configs prompts 10 init image. You've got a new option there in its image. If collab is more your thing, here is another repository animate diff collab. So there is a link for something you can open up in Google Colab. Even better still, of course, is this next Nerdy Rodent video.